Okay, hi there. As part of our study of supply-side economics and supply-side policies, let's take a look at uh, this question. What policies might a supporter of free market economics advocate to stimulate aggregate supply? This invites us to look at what's called market-based supply-side policies. And uh, there's quite a range of them. Typically, uh, those economists who uh, favour this approach to the supply side are those who argue in favour of minimal government intervention, a small state, and that allows the burden of taxation to be cut. For example, lower income taxes, uh, a reduction in corporation tax would be a good example of that. So market-based supply side economists favour tax cuts. They also favour cutting red tape, which is a uh, a general phrase used to describe the, the laws, the regulations that surround business. Whatever it is, health and safety legislation, environmental re legislation, uh, legislation and laws surrounding business compliance in all kinds of different ways. It's often said, for example, that red tape is something that holds back business growth because as you get bigger, then the compliance costs increase. So they would favour cutting back red tape. Uh, Supply-side economists on the free market side also favour privatisation, the transfer of ownership of a business from the public or the state sector back into the private sector. Of course, this in the UK was a very common feature of policy in the in the mid to late 1980s, the privatisation of businesses such as British Telecom, British Gas, British Airways. Uh, there's been a move back a little bit to uh, nationalisation in recent times, but in other countries, privatisation continues. Now, linked with this, although there's subtly different, uh, subtly differences between the two, is the idea of deregulation. So deregulation oftentimes goes hand in hand with privatisation, but it doesn't necessarily have to. And this involves things like opening up a market to fresh competition, reducing the legal barriers to entry in a market. Examples would include things like parcel deliveries and opticians, low-cost low cost airlines, telecoms, etc. Deregulate the idea is if you do that, new firms enter a market, new businesses enter an industry, and that increases the total supply. In the labour market, free market economists would favour stripping away some of the laws and regulations surrounding contracts. They, they would prefer and favour probably a much more flexible labour market with flexible employment contracts, flexible pay, more people working part-time instead of full-time. And uh, a free market economist on the supply side would probably also favour uh, free trade. Trade liberalisation, stripping away again things like import tariffs and quotas. Uh, the belief being that a greater intensity of trade competition across borders is a way of stimulating higher productivity, <coughs> innovation and ultimately aggregate supply. In the development sphere, uh, there is a big debate, huge debate actually, continues to this day about whether a market-based approach to aggregate supply is, a, is an appropriate development strategy. Uh, free market economists favour giving a much bigger role, much bigger job to the private sector, liberalising markets, structural supply-side reforms to raise incentives for people and businesses and increase transparency for government are key to their approach. Uh, lots of good examples around the world of countries which have favoured a free or a freer market approach. Perhaps two that would be good to, to do some research on would be Estonia, and now a European Union country, and Chile, which is now an OECD, a high income country. Both of those have actually followed a free market approach. Key to the free market approach is the fact the state has a role to play, in particular in protecting, reinforcing uh, property rights. So a free market system requires people, uh, requ well, requires the rule of law to protect property rights, be it, for example, land entitlement, uh, property rights to prevent unsustainable economic activity, prevent the tragedy of the commons, including deforestation, protecting intellectual property, uh, the, the protection of new ideas and processes and products. Uh, again, property rights over illegal poaching, the right to own and start a business. And increasingly in development spheres that the, the rights to have the rights to information, digital identity programs. So free market economists argue that the state has a key role to play in protecting property rights.
This is just a final slide looking at an overview of some of the key supply side policies on the market approach uh, side of the course. So make sure these are added, some of these are added into your existing class notes. In summary, free market economists favour cutting government spending. Uh, they don't like excessive budget deficits and high levels of debt. They favour a reduction in business tax to stimulate investment. And they also favour lower income taxes to improve the incentive to work. They want to get rid of red tape. They want the labour market to be more flexible. Uh, they favour tough competition policies in particular, uh, policies which are tough on cartel behaviour, including price fixing. They again favour privatisation of state assets, transfer to the private sector. And they also favour opening up a country to overseas trade, to investment. And many free market economists favour keeping the economy open to uh, inflows of skilled labour migration. I think this slide captures some of the key examples of so-called market-based supply-side policies. But it's important for evaluation to be aware of some of the drawbacks of this approach. Let me just pick out five for you to finish with. The first is that cutting taxes, uh, whilst intuitively attractive, it doesn't necessarily improve work incentives. Uh, much depends on which taxes are being cut for which people. It could well be the case that a tax could actually cause these people to work less rather than more, particularly if they have a strong demand for leisure. Secondly, uh, reductions in progressive direct taxes, particularly at the top end, uh, that could lead to an increase in income and wealth inequality. And there's a whole debate in economics about the extent to which high levels of inequality is actually damaging to the supply side performance of a country. Cutting corporation tax doesn't necessarily increase the level of business investment. It might attract investment, but corporations left with higher post-tax profits might increase the dividends paid to shareholders or the bonuses paid to executives rather than automatically increasing investment. Deregulating markets, <clears throat> bringing down the regulatory burdens, can in theory work, but also can lead in practice to increased instability. So a good example here is the financial markets, which were essentially given a light touch regulation in the early part of the, of the new century. And many people now argue that that light touch regulation wasn't sufficiently rigorous and uh, may have, particularly in the subprime mortgage market, and may have contributed to the underlying causes of the 2007-2010 global financial crisis. And having a flexible labour market in theory is fine. Matching people to jobs, uh, much more flexible employment contracts, increased employment. Flexible labour markets in theory are good, but there are some drawbacks. There are some risks. For example, uh, it, can, it can increase uh, em employment and income insecurity. People don't necessarily know uh, what their next month's income is going to be. And in a very flexible labour market, uh, there's some arguments that employers may actually invest less in training and upskilling their labour force. So here are five potential drawbacks of a market-based supply-side policy. In a future video, we'll look at interventionist approaches, which is essentially the second main group of ways of trying to increase aggregate supply.